Hey guys, welcome to Craft Break. I am Bianca, a content creator here at Plaid. And usually we get together to create Mod Podge projects, and we will be, but today we are going to incorporate our new paint, Murano. So I'm going to show you what we're making today, and then we're gonna to switch to our overhead camera so that I can show you the supplies that you'll need for this project. And today, we will be making this super cute tumbler out of our Murano paint, a little bit of Mod Podge, some scrapbook paper, and a plaid mason jar surface. So we're gonna switch over to our overhead and we'll give you an up close of some of those supplies. So, like I just said, you are going to need a mason jar. This is one of our surfaces here at Plaid. You guys can find this on plaidonline.com and it comes with a top. You are also going to need some painter's tape. You're gonna need some scrapbook paper with any design on it of your choice. You're also going to need some type of plastic caps and we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a few minutes. Um, you are going to need a drill with a drill bit in it. And you are going to need a stencil and a spouncer brush. And the last few things that you're gonna need for this project are, um, you're gonna need your Murano paint. So today I will be using Smoky Quartz. I'm gonna hold this up just a little bit so you guys can see it. This is a two ounce bottle. We have over 15 colors for you to choose from and we'll go through those a little bit more towards the end. But this is the color that I will be using for this project. And then lastly, you will need my Podge Dishwasher Safe Formula. And actually there is one more thing. You're gonna need a little bit of white paint. So I'm gonna be using folk art paint today. Um, but you can use any color that you would like. So that is everything that you will need for this project. I will show you the bottle of the folk art that I'm going to be using. So this is just wicker white matte folk art paint. All right, so we will go ahead and we'll get started. So I'm going to set some of this off to the side and we're going to grab our mason jar. And the top to it. If you guys have any questions as we go throughout this live, let us know. We'll try to get those answered as quickly and as best as we can. All right, so the first thing you wanna do to get started with this project is you're gonna need to grab your drill and a drill bit, and you're going to slowly create a hole at the top and in the middle of your mason jar's lid. So I've already gone ahead and pre-drilled this because this is a little loud. <laughs> I didn't want to do this on camera, but make sure you have a drill bit that is big enough to create a hole where a, where a straw can easily slide through it. So I slowly did it like this. Make sure that you aren't pressing down too hard. You want to do it slowly, and then you should end up with a hole like this. If you do have some jagged edges around your hole, you can grab um, some sanding paper or you can grab a dowel and kind of just go around the ridges to smooth it out a little bit So after you have done that You are going to grab some scrapbook paper And you are going to cut out a circle that matches the size of the top of your mason jars lid and now I'm going to grab a little bit of our Mod Podge dishwasher safe and we are going to apply it onto our lid. And then we're gonna put that piece of paper right on top. We'll allow that to dry. And then once it dries, you're gonna go back over it again to add a top layer of the Mod Podge dishwasher formula because that is going to seal and protect the paper and you'll be able to put it, put it in the dishwasher or you'll be able to hand wash it. All right, so I am taking my scrapbook paper and I'm placing it right on top. And once it dries, you can grab a pencil or you can grab a paintbrush, anything that is round, you can poke your hole through 
where you've created your pre-drilled hole. So we are gonna set this off to the side. We'll let that dry. And we will move on to painting our mason jar. So we're also gonna add this piece of scrapbook paper to the bottom of our mason jar, but we wanna do that after we've painted it because we don't wanna put it on before painting it or else the Murano might get on it and it might mess it up a little bit. But while you're cutting out that first piece of scrapbook paper, go ahead and cut another piece that matches the size of the bottom of your jar. All right, so now is the fun part. We are going to grab some painter's tape. We're gonna section our mason jar in half. So I'm gonna lay it down. And we are going to wrap this around. So try to get it as straight as possible. Uh -oh, I might need to tear a little bit more. Let's actually straighten that up just a little bit. There we go. All right, so you can do half of your jar. Um, you can do a little bit more than half or you can do a little bit less than half. It's totally up to you. However you would like to dip your glass, it's totally up to you and whatever creative design you would like to do. All right, so I am smoothing the tape out. You wanna make sure you remove all of the air bubbles. You wanna make sure it is as flat as possible. We don't want the paint to get up under here. We want to create straight lines as best as we can. All right, so now I am grabbing my Murano paint and I am going to drizzle it directly onto my surface and then we are going to use a plastic cap to tap and that's gonna help our paint run down our jar. With this paint, especially if you don't use a paintbrush, especially if you want it to look seamless and you don't wanna see any brush strokes, we want this to look like stained glass, like it was purchased that way. So we're not gonna use a paintbrush. We are going to use the tapping method to make the paint as smooth as possible. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the first side of my jar. This can get a little messy, so you wanna make sure that you are protecting your surface. And when you start tapping, I'll probably switch it over to the front view. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit on that side, and we're gonna put more over here. So I am not covering the entire jar because it's not necessary. Once I begin to tap, the paint will run down the mason jar and it will cover up the rest of it for me. So make sure you don't overuse the paint when you are doing a project like this. Try to get as much as you can out of the least amount as possible, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so we'll put a little more over here. And if we need more, we can add more, but we don't want to overdo it at first. So. All right, so I am going to begin to tap. Uh, we're going to switch back to our front camera so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to tap. It might be a little loud for a few seconds. So let's see, actually that did pretty good on the first try. So we have one side that is completely covered. We have two corners here towards the back that need to be covered up. So I'm gonna tap a little bit more. Ooh. Yes, this gets messy. So make sure you have your surface protected and also wear an apron if you need to.
Alrighty, we have one more corner right here. I am going to tap one more time. Let's make sure. I think that is everything yet. So I'm going to tap for just a few more seconds. I believe all of our corners are covered. We'll switch back over to our overhead camera. I'm gonna hold this up close. So as you can see, the entire bottom half of our mason jar is covered. Um, there is a little bit here on the bottom. You can wipe that off now, or once it dries, you can peel it off. I have a napkin here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of that off just so I don't have to do it later. And then we are going to let this sit and dry. You can set it in front of a fan to help speed up the drying time or you can leave it alone. Um, I do like to set it in front of a fan. It can cut the drying down, the drying time down by almost 20 to 30 minutes. But if you are not in a rush, you can just let it sit. And the color will be slightly lighter than this, but it will dry to be transparent. So whatever you're putting inside of your tumbler, you will be able to see it. So I am going to switch off to a clean plastic cap and we're gonna let it dry on top of that because I just wiped the bottom of it and we don't wanna get the paint back on it. So I'm gonna set this on a cap and we will set this off to the side. And also, another thing to mention, before you let your mason jar dry, you wanna go ahead and you wanna remove your painter's tape. So let's actually do that now, because what you don't want to happen is you allow the paint to dry and then you take the painter's tape off and then you accidentally peel your paint. So let's actually go ahead and remove that now. Do it as slowly as possible. Cool beans. So if you need to clean up the edges before it dries, you can grab a Q-tip, you can grab a razor, or you can grab something with a firing tip to try to edge up your line if needed. All right, so now we're gonna set this off to the side and let it dry. All righty. All right. And as I mentioned earlier, you can take the bottom piece for your mason jar, um, the cut piece of scrapbook paper, and you can mop podge it onto the bottom of your bottle. I have actually already gone ahead and done that. The exact same way that we did the top is the same way that I did the bottom. I applied the mop podge onto the jar and then I added the piece of scrapbook paper onto it. And then I added another layer of the dishwasher safe Mod Podge onto the bottom just to seal it and protect it and make sure that it will stay attached to the glass. Alrighty, so let's grab a stencil and some painter's tape. This is still drying. We're gonna give this a few more minutes and then we'll come back and we'll poke our hole in the middle. So I am tearing some pieces of painter's tape. We are going to lay this on top of our mason jar. This is a Hello Hobby stencil. If you guys need any recommendations on what to get, you can freehand this if you are able to. I am not the best drawer or artist, so I'm gonna use a stencil. So I'm gonna place this directly in the middle and then you can grab whatever paint color you would like to. I am using white. And then you're also gonna grab a spouncer. That is the best type of paintbrush to use when you are stenciling. All right, this is a rounded surface. So you wanna be careful when you are adding your paint onto it 
um, the stencil is not going to lay directly flat, especially if it is of a certain size. So we're going to do this slowly and carefully. I am going to grab my spouncer. So it looks a little something like this. And I am going to lightly tap it in my white paint. And I'm actually going to get a little bit of it off. We don't want to overload it because we don't want our paint to run um, anywhere that it's not supposed to. All right, so I am going to lightly, lightly tap. And you can do this as many times as you need to until you gain full coverage, but what you don't want to do is use too much paint on the first coat. We don't want the paint to run. So I am lightly tapping in the places where the stencil was not able to lay flat. I'm just using my finger to hold it down. I just lightly, lightly tapping. We will look at it and see if it actually needs a second coat. I think it actually does, but I do have another one that is dried and ready to go. So we can pull that out if we need to. Let's see. Let's actually dry this one with our drying tool. So I'm gonna grab my drying tool here. We'll turn this on for just a second. So this one actually will need a second coat, but that's okay. We have another step out that is ready. So I'm gonna switch to that one. But actually, before we switch to it, let's set this off to the side. And let's go ahead and let's poke our hole into the top of our mason jar. So I am going to grab a paintbrush. And we're gonna poke it through. feel for it. The hole is right here. All right. So we have our hole. I'm going to pick off the excess paper that is underneath. And now we're going to grab our paintbrush again. And we'll go back over this with a top coat of our dishwasher safe Mod Podge. This also dries pretty quickly. If you let this sit off to the side for about 20 minutes, this will dry clear. All right, so that is our lid. And now, let's set all of our paint and our Mod Podge off to the side. And we're gonna grab our dried mason jar. And on everything 
is done drying, including your Murano paint and your stenciled letter. It should look something like this. And as you can see, I'll hold it up. We have our Mod Podge scrapbook paper at the bottom, and it is on the outside. It is not on the inside of the jar. And we also have a dried lid. We're going to go ahead and grab our straw and we'll push it through. We're going to add it onto the top of our mason jar. And then I have a super cute charm that I actually dropped on the floor. I'm going to grab it really quickly. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. So this is just a cute little charm that I made that we can add around our straw here and your Morano tumbler is done. All right, there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to flip it up. I'll hold it up close so you guys can see the detail here. And this is what your tumbler should look like once your project is completed. So we'll flip back to the front camera. Of course, you guys can get as creative as you would like to at home with this design. This is something that I personally would carry around myself. So I chose the color specifically for myself, but we have a bunch of colors to choose from. I'll actually go through a few of them before we get out of here, but I wanted you guys to see the completed project. This is what it looks like. So we're going to switch back over to the overhead camera really quickly. I'm going to go through a few colors and then we'll get out of here. If you guys have any questions, let us know and we will answer them. So if you think you want to make this at home, here are a bunch of other colors to choose from. We have iridescent pink. We have transparent red. We have iridescent purple. We also have transparent green, transparent vintage pink. We also have transparent regular pink, and then we have transparent yellow, and we have a few more. Iridescent emerald, smoky quartz, and that is the color that I use for my tumbler today, the smoky quartz. And then our last few colors are clear, transparent orange, transparent deep purple, transparent teal, and then the last color that I'm going to share with you guys today is our metallic gold. And when you are purchasing these, make sure that you guys are paying attention to the ones that say transparent. Those are the colors that will be translucent and you'll be able to see through them. But if you want a solid color and you're not necessarily wanting to see through it, those are the colors that don't say transparent. So um, let's see, our metallic gold is not transparent. Um, the iridescent pink and then the iridescent emerald. So anything that says transparent, you'll be able to see through it and all of our other colors will be solid. So keep that in mind when you are purchasing your colors. Um, but we have a bunch more colors to choose from. Make sure you visit platonline.com so that you can see all of them. So we'll switch back to our front camera. If you guys do not have any questions, thank you guys so much for crafting with us and we'll see you guys next week.